Okay, here we go. We're going to be talking today about angles. And so uh, a good deal of uh, definitions and vocabularies right from the beginning. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, you're, you're writing these into your vocabulary section, uh, formatting it, whatever you need to do. And then we're going to start taking some notes. Make sure you do that. Follow the, the um, practice problems. Make sure that you understand them as we go. If you're just simply writing down what I'm doing, that doesn't help your understanding. You'll come in lost the next period. So stop it, pause it, fast forward, whatever you need to do. Make sure you come in ready to go. Here we go. Okay, so the first word is angle. And it's basically two non-collinear rays with the same starting point. So here we go. Here's one ray and here's the red one. It's two rays, and that forms this thing called an angle. Uh, this point right here is called a vertex. That'll be one of our vocabulary words coming up. Basically, I can call this angle angle A, or I could use three letters, B, A, C, B, A, C. I could call it also C, A, B. Here's the thing. I need to make sure A, this thing, this point where the two rays come out of, is always in the middle. It's the most important letter in the three letters. Make sure it's in the middle, okay? Next up is a vertex, and as I just used it in that uh, definition for an angle, a vertex is basically a common endpoint of where two rays are create an angle. So, you know, that's an endpoint or a uh, vert. All right, next up is an angle bisector, a ray or line that cuts an angle into two congruent parts. Basically, I have this black angle here, the red ray represents a ray that bisects it, cuts it in half. You'll see the marks here, I have two arcs two arcs and that shows just like when we were doing segments that were congruent we put two little hash marks on it to uh, show that the segments congruent I put arcs and I can put two three one it doesn't matter but if these two angles are congruent the number of arcs that I put in here matches the one down here really important notice these are staggered this these two um, are not pulled over and right underneath the other ones okay they are staggered that's really important okay so here's just a drawing of angle B, and uh, it has, a, or another name for it is ABC, and BD is an angle bisector of that angle, okay? Next up is uh, adjacent angle. Basically, these are two angles that are adjacent to each other, just like rooms can be adjacent. Uh, these angles are adjacent. It's two angles that share a ray or a wall and a vertex. So here's um, one angle right here. And then here's the second angle. Whoops. And uh, basically, those two angles share this wall, BC, ray BC. And that makes this angle and this angle adjacent. So I could write it in words angle ABC and CBD are adjacent, sharing ray BC. Next up is angle addition postulate, just like the segment addition postulate from the other night. It says, you know, we can add adjacent angles to make larger angles. That's kind of a layman's term. In other words, it's a real cheap term of uh, cheap explanation of what this is. There's much more technical way of writing it. It's very much like this over here. But we're just going to right now use this working definition. So basically, I have um, this angle ABC and angle CBD. Since they're adjacent to each other, they carry, they um, have this same common ray. I can add that angle to this angle and get a bigger angle. And that's what this writing over here says. Next up is a series of four words where we're classifying angles, meaning when we can look at the angle, we have a name for that type of angle. It's not the name of the angle, but the type of angle we're classifying it. In this case, we're talking acute angles. And as you can see, here's the definition, and this is an example of it. As most of you recognize this as a right angle, um, we have the definition and a picture. All right, and I know we're moving quite quickly, but you have a pause button, so you pause it and write down there. Here's an obtuse angle. And as you can see, it's just slightly, um, it's bigger, not slightly. It can be bigger than a right angle. A right angle would have a ray coming up like this straight up. And it would be formed with this other one. That would be a right angle. This is obviously a bigger than 90 degree angle. And last word that we'll use for classifying angles is called a straight angle. And that's uh, when it's equal to 180 degrees. So this, uh, this ray right here, if it came out over here, would be acute, and then right, 
and then obtuse, but it's been stretched all the way over to the other side, and that makes it a right or a 180 degree. Okay, I just want to quickly go over a protractor. You should have purchased one of these. I need you to come in tomorrow uh, to the next class knowing how to use your protractor. It's very important. So if you're having difficulty with this, you can go on Google and, and watch videos of people showing how to do it. I'm just going to quickly uh, demonstrate um, how it operates and how different angles and stuff like that. We'll look at a couple, but uh, you, you create your own angles, measure them with your protractor so that you come in and completely understand. If you look at this protractor, it starts at zero on the inside numbers, goes all the way over to 180. And on the other side, uh, the zero is on the outside uh, row of numbers. Okay, I'm going to show you a protractor in the next uh, slide uh, that, that this is switched. And it's no worries, it still operates the same. Notice that um, this bar right here represents, um, or these two blue lines represent the two rays that make up my angle. And so when, when the two rays are not distinct, meaning they're one right on top of another, that's a zero degree angle. It's not much of an interest. But as we start to raise this up and we now have two distinct rays, we now have an angle in here that we measure in degrees. That's what that symbol means, like a little tiny zero up there. That's a, it's not a zero, it's a degrees symbol. But as we move this up, um, we create different angles. So what I want to show you is that this is a small acute angle. So 140 is the number out there. That would be an obtuse angle. So that doesn't make sense at all. So if I gave you this angle and said, hey, which one is this? You should say it's a 40 degree angle, not that 140 degree angle. That's for when you're measuring from this side as I will in a bit. OK, so we keep on going up. And you would classify that as what kind of tri uh, what kind of angle? That's right, a right angle. So if you didn't say right, um, you should have. And anything on this side would be an obtuse angle all the way up to 179 degrees. Once you go from 179 degrees to 180, we are talking straight angle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to being on this side. So my uh, ray is right here and my other ray is right here. And I'm moving it along. And as you can see, this would be a 40 degree angle over here. And now we're using the numbers on the outside. So when you're practicing with a protractor, make sure you're, it's making sense what the degree mark is that you're using. If you don't practice with your protractor, you come into class and you're not sure how to use it, you have not done your homework properly this evening. So I'm just going to do a kind of a refresher course on using a protractor. Again, if you need more help with this, you can go to Google or you can come and see me after school on Tuesday and Thursday and I just give you a, a real quick lesson on it. So basically I have an angle over here. I have no idea, uh, no idea what the measurement is. And so I'm going to uh, just extend this out here real quick. I'm going to take this protractor and I'm going to actually take uh, the center part right here and I'm going to put it on the vertex just like that. And I'm going to rotate it so that this bottom ray goes through the zero on that side. Then I'm going to go up here and I'll read what it goes through and it says um, 47 degrees. Now let me give you a piece of advice. Suppose you um, have your protractor and um, you end up with rays that are too small to be read on your protractor. They look like something like this. Too small. So when you come in here, it'll just, it just won't line up right. We won't have any way. And so you'll probably guess what this is, but that's not what I want you to do. I want you to do is take your straight edge. Uh, you can use the bottom of your protractor and a pencil, and you just extend that line out so you can get a good, accurate reading. I'm going to pretend like that's what's going on when I extend this out, and you'll see that now it's at a 45-degree angle. Very good. Let's move on. Okay, again, hopefully you're taking notes. I want you to draw these pictures into your note. Put me on pause. I'm going to keep on talking, but put me on pause until you're ready. All right, here we go. So in this drawing right here, I could call this angle B. Another name for it could be A, B, C. And lastly, uh, another name I could use is angle 1. For this drawing over here, um, this angle right here is angle one. Some people will, you know, at first glance think that that's the angle measurement. And it's not. That's not how many degrees. I'm classifying that, or I'm saying that that's angle one right there. Here's angle two. And I could say this is angle three. So I have angle W, X, Y, which is the same as angle one. Y, X, Z, which is the same as angle two. And then I have angle W, X, Z which would be this um, angle three if I had a number there. Okay, what's really important is that you can't call 
this angle angle X. Like I call this one up here angle B. I can't call any of this. I can't say, hey, go look at angle X because there's just too many angles with a vertex at X vertex at x so i don't know when you say go look at angle x are you talking about angle one angle two or the big angle i have no idea so we would have to use either the three letters the small numbers or whatever all right next up we're going to look at the angle addition postulate it basically says that if r is in the interior of an angle pqs then the measure of pqr plus the measure of pqs is equal to PQS. This is the very formal definition of angle addition postulate. We used something a little bit simpler earlier. Let's take a look at the picture on this one. Okay, basically what all this is saying is angle PQR plus RQS is equal to this big angle. If I add that little angle and that angle together, I get the big angle. Simple enough. All right, we're going to come back to that for a second. We'll let that sink in. We're just going to do some notation stuff here, see how you're doing. Um, as you can see, it says, what number names angle A, B, D? A, B, D. You can see it should be angle number two. How about this one? What is the vertex of angle three? So here we are, angle three. What letter would you identify as the vertex of that? Hopefully you would say C. And then finally, the third question for this drawing up here says, what are the sides of angle one? So here's one. I want you to talk about or write down what are the sides that are rep that represent angle one. All right, so hopefully you wrote down DA and DB in your notes before I did. All right, let's move on. All right, looking at this problem here, uh, go ahead and take a, a few seconds, pause me, and then draw all that information in. And we'll talk about it. So I'm just going to wait for you to do that. All right, I'm back. Hopefully you are. So if you take a look at this, I have uh, basically a series of angles. I have no information for this one over here. I have some given information over here. This is also given information, but it's put into the drawing. And so um, let me just kind of clean that up a bit. Okay, great. So according to the segment addition postulate, it says this, if I add this segment together plus this, I'm sorry, when I add the angle addition postulate, when I add this angle to this angle, I should get the whole big angle. Let's see if this information will help me do that. So it says QRS, and sure enough, QRS is equal to 125 degrees. So what I would like you to do is just put me on pause and see if you could write a relationship, an equation that uses this information and this information that would be true. Put me on pause and then get back to me. Okay, there you have it. That's the equation she wrote. The 4R plus T, 4R plus 2, plus the 5R minus 12 equals 125. These, this angle plus this angle equals the whole angle. I'm going to go ahead and just move through the algebra for this. And you can take a look at that at your slowness. Okay, let's take a real quick look at this problem. Basically, what we're looking at is a drawing here. So go ahead and make sure you take a few seconds, copy this drawing into your notes, as well as this information that's up here. Um, basically, it says QT, that's QT right there, bisects RQS, RQS. So whenever I have information like that, I always look into the drawing, make sure I understand what it's telling me. Well, that's definitely a clue. That um, this information right here, these, uh, this, um, whoops, sorry. It's telling me that this angle right here and this angle right here are congruent. And I'll just put the little congruent marks in there. Again, staggering them. Okay, well, this is not a segment uh, or an angle addition problem. Um, the reason is because I, if I knew what the big angle was, then I certainly could take that piece plus that piece equals the whole angle, just like the angle addition postulate, angle addition postulate allows me to do. But I do know because this is a bisector that this angle here and this angle here are exact same measures. They're just expressed differently. So because of that, I can now use this equation. So this equation right here basically says that this angle here 
and this angle here are equivalent. They're equal to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put that together, and then I would just simply solve that equation. And I get down to, after doing some simple algebra, x is equal to 7. But that's not the answer. A lot of you will make the mistake. You'll put that down as your answer, and it's not. They're asking, what is RQT? So as you can see down here, I did my little bar, like I've asked you to do, to show the reader where the information is. And so after doing that work, I end up with RQT is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, that's not correct. 49 minus 2 is not that. 49 minus 2 is 47. There we go, 47 degrees. Make sure you put that degree mark in there. That's it. Have a great day. Oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. It's time for your try it problems. Okay, there's your triad problems. There's your triad problems. Go ahead and put on pause, copy those problems down, bring it on a separate piece of paper, and get credit. Thanks, class. Take care.